In this tutorial we're going to look at creating some textures using simple toolpaths such as the fluting and the v-carve and some vectors that we create. I'm going to start by creating a new file. I'm going to make a template for our work which is 48 by 24 origin lower left corner working in inches. You could obviously change the size of this to suit whatever kind of texture panel you wanted to create. The first texture we're going to look at here is using some simple straight lines and the fluting toolpath. So I'm going to create a line which starts at x0, y0 using the create polyline tool, hit add and then put in x5, y0, hit add again and that's created just a simple straight line 5 inches long at the origin. Next I'm going to take that line, I'm going to make multiple copies of it and what I'm going to do is make one, keep one row in Y and make 11 copies in X. I'm going to put a Y offset of 0 and an X offset of 5. So essentially just putting these end to end because this one is 5 inches long. Hit copy and there's my 11 copies of that line. If we select those, I'm going to right mouse click, hit copy to copy those to the clipboard and then I'm going to move that line along half the length of the line of a single line so two and a half and up 0.4 so we're just offsetting the line slightly now I'm going to right mouse click and paste back my original set so I've got two sets of lines there one slightly offset from the other back to the array function this time I'm going to make 31 copies in Y one in X I want an X offset of 0 and a Y offset of 0.8 which is two times the distance that I moved that set of lines up. We hit copy that creates all those lines for me and now with those selected I'm going to come over to align objects center in material. Now I'm going to come over to the toolpath tab by hitting F12 on the keyboard. I'm going to make sure we've got all the lines selected and we'll go ahead and go into a fluting toolpath. In the fluting toolpath we're going to set up a flute depth of 0.3 we're going to select a one inch ball nose so quite a big ball nose cutter to give us the effect we're looking for. I'm going to choose to ramp at the start and end so both in and out of each of these lines and go with a smooth ramp type and I'm going to go ahead and hit calculate. See we very quickly calculated the toolpath and if we want now we can preview that to see how it's going to look. So we can see how that has created quite an interesting texture just by doing simple fluting moves going down and up in and out of the material based on the different parameters that we set. Now if we wanted to change the look of this we might change the distance between each of the lines when we copied them or we may change the length of the line or even just going into the fluting toolpath again so double clicking on the fluting toolpath name we could change it by changing things like the depth or even by changing the flute type. In this case I may say that I just want to ramp over the complete length, still keep a smooth flute and hit calculate, reset the preview, preview the toolpath and see what that one looks like. And you can see we've got a completely different looking effect now that we've done that. Again if we wanted to we could double click this, come back to it, maybe now we want to set to ramp at the start and the end but go with a linear instead of a smooth transition. Again we can recalculate it, reset the preview, preview the toolpath and now we can see we've got something similar to the first one we generated but it has this kind of crease running through the bottom of each of the um, kind of dished in areas that the tool's creating. You can use different shapes of tool, different size of tool and even v-bit tools to create similar textures and again this is just taking a single straight line and applying the fluting toolpath to it after we've created these array copies. So that's the first of our three textures so I'm going to go ahead and save this and so in case you want to open the file and look at it it'll be in the project folder and we'll just call that fluting texture.crv. So having saved that, let's go ahead and just create a new file, file new, use the same parameters as we used before, 48 by 24, and now we're going to create a simple weave pattern that we're going to v-carve. So I'm going to go ahead and create a rectangle which is width 2, 
height 1 and we're going to center it at x0, y0. Hit create. We can see that's just created my rectangle in the lower left corner. I'm going to select it, right mouse click and copy that. I'm then going to go to the rotate selected objects, put in a 90 degree angle, apply that and then go to move selected objects, move it relative to its current position over in x by 2. Apply, close, right mouse click and paste the original back in. Next I'm going to go ahead and sketch a um, square in here. I'm going to change the anchor point down to x0, y0 for the lower left corner and we've just snapped between the two center points here and now I'm going to put in a height of 2 and because of our anchor point that's going to go up from there and now what I'm able to do is select um, twice onto this and hovering over the middle I'm going to hold control drag and snap that to this corner select this twice over the middle control held down drag and snap that to there and then just delete that square that we used for construction purposes. Let's zoom to fit again. So now we want to take these and copy them in an array. So I'm going to select um, the weave here and what we're going to do is go to the copy array function. Um, I want to create sorry, six copies in Y, 12 columns in X and we're going to put in an offset of X for Y4. Okay, hit close. If we want to now, we can just come to Align Objects, Center in Material. I'm going to just make sure that these are all grouped together, so I'm going to reselect them there and just hit Control G on the keyboard in order to group those as a single object. Because I want to V-carve in between these, I don't want to V-carve all the way to the edge of my job, so I'm going to crop these vectors to some boxes that I'm going to build. So I'm going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to um, snap the lower left corner to 0, 0 and put in a width of 48 and a height of 24. So this effectively is a box the size of our part. Now we're going to go ahead and offset that inwards. First I'm going to offset it in by 0.25, then I'm going to offset that in by 0.75. And you'll see the purpose of this in a moment. Now what I want to do is crop my weave vectors to this vector that we just offset, the second vector that we offset here. So I'm going to select the weave, shift and select that rectangle there. And then we're going to come ahead and choose this option to say keep overlap of vectors. When we click that it crops the outside set of those vectors to the line that I created. And now I've got a border line and the lines in here that I'm going to v-carve in between. So if we hit F12 on the keyboard, I'm going to go ahead and grab all the vectors I've got and then shift and deselect the outermost vector. Remember we created a vector that was the size of our part. I do not want that as part of the selection. I'm going to go to the V-carve and I'm going to uh, select. And in this case, we'll go ahead and select 120 degree V-bit. Apply and hit OK. If you don't have that tool, you may need to create it, or you can just choose one of the other V-cutters and hit Calculate. There we can see what the toolpath looks like, very simple toolpath. If we preview that, we can see the effect that that set of vectors and a V-carve toolpath is going to give us, which is an interesting kind of weave stroke brick type texture. So let's go ahead and save this as well. So file, save as, and we'll call this vcarve texture weave.crv and hit save to save that file in the project folder. So let's go ahead and just close this file. And a variation on that that I want to show you that's also in the project folder, if we hit open existing file, it's this file called vcarve texture ovals. This was created from a very similar set of vectors, but instead of the rectangle weaves, I created these ellipses and then filled in the space with these circles and did the same 4 inch um, array copy and trim back to a line. And if we take a look in the 3D view, hit F12 to pop out the toolpath tab. You can see that just v-carve in between these, if I preview this, 
gives a very different effect even though the vectors are very similar and you can even create more interesting effects by v-carving with different shapes different angled tools varying the uh, shapes that you use and even making them more random or even using the distortion tools which you're going to see in the next example in a second so moving on to that I'm just going to say file and close for our final texture let's go ahead and create a new file again same parameters again we're going to create some simple vectors to work with this time I'm going to draw a rectangle and I'm going to make it 60 wide and I'm give it a height of 0 0.5 hit create and that again that distance could be important to us hit close now I'm going to select that rectangle and I'm going to go ahead and make an array copy of it this time I want to go up in Y and I want to make 60 of these I'm going to make 1 in X 0 X offset and the Y offset is very important I'm going to go 0 0.52 now remember the thickness of this box is 0.5 so by going 0.52 I'm going to leave a 0 0.02 gap in between each one of these by leaving that gap it's going to give me more flexibility when I come to start doing the editing that you're about to see me do next I'm going to select those and I'm going to go ahead and hit F9 in order to center them and align the objects in the middle of our workspace now I'm going to take these and we're going to distort them I'm going to v-carve each of these boxes with a ball nose tool but I want to get a kind of a wave pattern so I'm going to use the distortion tools I'm going to grab all those say distort selected objects select bounding box and hit apply now I have a distortion envelope and I want to come to the top line here and hit B on the keyboard to make this a bezier span which adds these handles that you see here and I can go B on the bottom span in order to add handles there as well and then I can do as much or as little distortion of this as I want in order to change the way that it's going to look within the job so here I'm applying some simple kind of wave shape to this I could do it between vectors if I wanted to define this more precisely I'm kind of happy with the way that looks I'm going to hit close with those selected I'm going to go over to F12 and create a toolpath on this I'm going to come to the VCarve toolpath I'm going to select the one inch ball nose tool um, many people don't realize you can VCarve with a ball nose tool typically as long as the vectors you're V-carving um, are thinner uh, and, and not as wide as the diameter of the ball nose then you might get it you could get a decent result so I'm going to go ahead and hit calculate this will take a few seconds and there we can see our VCarve toolpath and if we want we can preview that into our board and we can see how that's going to look when we v-carve that and create this wave pattern and you can imagine we could create more uh, distorted or interesting wave patterns if we come back to it hit F11 to come back to the design tab I might want to grab these vectors again go back into the distort click to edit the envelope I might want to um, select in the 2d view hit I to insert an extra point and then we can do more to start distorting the shape that we're working with again to get a different kind of effect than the one we had before if we've got too much vector sticking out here once we were happy with our wave effect I could go ahead and use the same tool as I used for the other textures create a box and limit these vectors to that if we close this hit F12 just double click our VCarve toolpath recalculate it with the same set of vectors um, but obviously now slightly differently distorted than we had them before then we can go ahead and we'll get a new toolpath and we can preview this now we still have the preview for the old texture there and what's kind of interesting is sometimes if you preview two different toolpaths on the same area then you'll get some quite interesting effects like you see here 
So this now is cutting through this one. So you could actually take and combine multiple sets of these toolpaths to give you different kind of visual effects. In this case though, if I just wanted to reset this and preview just this toolpath, we can see how that's going to look based on those simple set of boxes that we array copied up, making sure to leave that small gap. That small gap really helps because when I come and start distorting these objects, because they're not overlapping, the software won't have a problem calculating the VCARV toolpath. If you have overlapping vectors, then there's a good chance the software won't be able to sort out the order of what's inside and outside, and you won't get the kind of result you see here. So that concludes this tutorial showing you how to create some different interesting textures using simple vectors, the fluting and the VCARV and hopefully you'll take this and try variations of your own to see the types of textures you can create 